please get excited, but please don't get a Paul. You are about to watch my video radio with DJ Paul. Danny Lee, what's up? What's poppin'? How you doing? Chillin', how are you? I'm good, can't complain, man. Danny Lay, I'm just gonna get straight into it. So it's a crazy year. And um, if a man approaches a, approach a woman wearing a mask, what do we supposed to say to them? Like, obviously she gonna be like, well, why do you want to talk to me? You don't even know how I look. But obviously we eat with our eyes before we do our mouth. Right. So <laughs> what do we suppose, how do we suppose to approach a beautiful woman? Um, with a mask on. I mean, it depends on the scenario, like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, yeah, we got a mask on, but you still a person. So you still gotta, however your game is gonna be, like, you just gotta be that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like it's the same with or without a mask, honestly. I could tell, like, I'm cute with a mask off on. <laughs> so, like, the man got a mask on, I feel like I could tell. But also, like, he could have some, like, a crazy ass mouth too. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he could. What 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 kind of what what kind of man does it for you? You like tall? You like short? What 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 kind of man does it for Danny Lay? I'm um, just taller from taller than me. I'm already like a shorty, so you know what I mean. You just gotta be taller than me. I don't like super tall. I mean, I've been with someone super tall, but I don't know, just taller than me. <laughs> so, um, one of my favorite artists in the world is. No, probably my favorite artist in the world is Prince, which you have a, had a strong relationship with. Probably the greatest artist of all times. So like oh, you would be on the back, it was saying, produced, um, engineered, this and that. Prince did everything on his own. So how did you, how did Prince come across you? Um, he told me he saw me online and at that time I was a super busy dancer. I was like booking jobs. So I had to like the BET awards with like Beanie Man and Miguel and like I was just in a lot of music videos and I was very heavily on social media just like I am now but more so like doing funny videos and like dance videos and things like that. So uh, he told me he saw me online. He never told me what he found or what he saw but yeah so it was that and he just loved my personality and like my content so it was and he got you to direct a video for him was that the first video you ever directed yes and i have been familiar of just like being on set because i had been on music videos so the first thing he asked me to do was to do like a choreography submission to the song so i did a video of me like dancing to breakfast can wait and i sent it over and he like loved it then he was like, okay, I want you to write a treatment and direct the video, and I'm gonna give you this much money to do it. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, and run, it, was, run yeah, it. I was up, he's scared, but I got it done. It's hard. So like, right here I have a Prince comic book. That's all. And I have this, yeah. which is the book of Paisley Park. I went to if anybody ever in uh, the Minneapolis airport, make sure you stop at a print store because it's super cool. Well, that's tight. <laughs> super cool. One more thing before I get up out of here. Monique, love the song. Thank you. <laughs> um, love the lyrics. Why did you name the song Monique? So I say in the song, big money speech in my pockets, Monique. So... Miss Monique Parker, I absolutely love her. And I feel like she was such a boss woman. She fought for her rights to be, you know, a, a well-paid comedian. Like she really mm -hmm. like, you know, is a big inspiration. And I feel like she's just a boss. And that's how I felt doing the record. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was like, that's, that's my vibe. It kind of is like my little alter ego too. Like, <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's why. That's dope. That's super dope. I know I know Monique. So before we get out of here, like, uh, what do you want to tell the people? What do you feel the rest of this world would be like? Are you looking forward to doing concerts? You want to chill a minute? Like, tell us about the rest of the world right now. I do not want to chill. I'm trying to go. Like, my album about to drop. I wish I could go tour it. Like, 
that I, that's my favorite part of this life is literally shows and like touring and everything like that so that's what I'm waiting for for the world to open back up and for people to get to you know experience my music live the world is waiting on you Danny Lee. always good sis love you see you soon all right for sure thank you my beautiful What's up, brother? What's happening? What's up, legend? Man, man, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good. I'm fucking hungover. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the same, man. You don't, you don't, you don't matter if I light up, do you? Nah, go ahead. Who am I to tell you not to? <laughs> <laughs> so. Let's talk about let's talk about Oakland. Yeah. You're from Oakland. Yeah, I'm from I'm from I'm from West Oakland. <clears throat> you wanna hear something funny about man. Oakland? Yeah. Oakland was um the first city on the West Coast to endorse three six mafia. Really? Yeah. So like we used to we used to when uh back in the day when sound scan was a thing, I don't even know if there's a such thing of it no more. Back in the day when sound scan was a thing, I used to be looking at sound scan and I would see us selling records obviously in the south and the east coast and this and that. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it would be Oakland. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? Like, how how are we selling records in Oakland, California? And but then when I started looking at y'all niggas back in the day, y'all niggas had jerry curls and shit just like us. So y'all yeah. looked like us. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I mean, it's it's you, you it's it's that's that pimp shit, really. Right. Cause I know how many people get down. It's just pimp culture. It's niggas, a pimp culture. Niggas you know, identified uh, with it. Uh huh. And y'all got um, who's the guy had the the popular book? Uh, fuck. Bill Mo uh, Slim. Slim. Yep. Is he still around? Um, you know, I don't know. I I I think so. I think so, but I don't know. I can't verify that. That book, that book was big. Yeah, it was everywhere. It was crazy. I remember, I remember, uh, I stole it from Barnes and Nobles. <laughs> <laughs> I you stole that book. <laughs> that's hard. And you that's know, hard. you know, with something that's uh, <laughs> that is also hella similar. We both, Oakland and Memphis, both dance. A lot and in similar ways with the footwork. Yep. So that's where the culture intersected a lot too. It, it was in dance. Niggas could could do all the Oakland dances to Memphis shit. So what do y'all? What do y'all call y'all? Oh, y'all uh, hyphy. Is that what? Is that what y'all call it out there? Yeah. Yeah. Hyphy. Hyphy is a term. Nobody really uses it no more because the movement is over. But it's like a, it's just like the spirit still is around. When you go out there and you play certain music, you gonna get that energy. Niggas don't call it hypey no more. But that's that was the era. It was like our our black renaissance in the Bay was the hypey movement. That's what do y'all call y'all dances? What y'all dances out there now? Like you know how in Memphis we call our shit jooking. What do y'all yeah. call y'all? Um, turfing. Turpin? Turpin, like turf. Oh, like T U R F? Yep. That's hard. Yeah, turf dancing. Turf dance. Oh, fuck. I got to look that up. That's hard. You, look, hard. You, and you're going to see them niggas doing a little bit of juking and shit too. Like, that. I remember we used to have dance battles and shit when I was little because my brother would dance and he, we'd go to the battles. <clears throat> And watch them niggas and niggas from Memphis would come out and they'd be doing all type of smooth ass shit with Air Forces 
in Tim's. And I'll be like, how is these niggas moving that <laughs> that easy in the big ass shoes? But, but, they, but do you know why? No. -uh. Performing at the Memphis Grizzlies. And uh, I was like, how are y'all doing this in these fucking heavy ass fucking Air Force Ones and this and that? And they told me, I guess because of the 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 sturdiness of the shoes, they can be on their toes more. Yeah. I that makes even sense. Know that. that makes sense because the uh the sole so thick on the Air Force One and it's just a, a block under it. It's all the way even. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So uh did you you moved did you move to LA? Mm-hmm. I'm in LA right now. That's what's happening. Yeah. What made you move to LA from Oakland? Man, I wanted to be a rapper. And I just knew this was the place to do it. It was it, it was no other choice. And I was I was going through hella shit at the time. And I was just tired of, of scamming and taking losses. Even my win, even when I was up, I just was unhappy. So I was like, I'm just gonna rap, bro. And I moved out here. So talk let's let's talk about scamming. Describe yeah. scamming. Um the act or art of identity theft or illegal manipulation of somebody else's funding. Gotcha, gotcha. Something that obviously we not doing no more, but <laughs> there, was, there was a point in your life. Yes, exactly. There was a point in your life. Okay, yeah, we all did crazy shit. You know, so. <laughs> You know, we did some, we did, we we do crazy shit. But like, so what, what, uh, what do you, so just one thing I heard about you, I heard that you are a big political person. I'm trying to be, I'm, I'm, I've been involved, getting more involved in politics, but I'm not like the wokest nigga. I'm not on no Dr. Umar shit, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to, uh, make the right steps to be more, uh, in tune with that shit. Did, did you vote? Mm-hmm. I voted uh two days. You ago. don't have to say who you don't have to say who you voted for. It's cool. I I didn't vote for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know one thing I learned in life is like you gotta it's certain views that you have to kind of keep personal, but I mean obviously you don't you don't you know it's like fuck that shit. But it's like like Sometimes you don't want people to know certain things. Yeah. But you know, whatever. You already threw it out there. <laughs> so who who you think on who you think on wait? I shit, why fuck? I'm watching the TV right now. I think we're still waiting. We still got a ways to go. I, I think we might don't even know till another 30 days or so. Hey, I want to know why it's taking so long. It makes me curious. I got a conspiracy theory, and I'm not big on conspiracy theories at all. But I think something, something fishy is going on in Nevada. They don't even got that many people out there for it to be taking this long. Mm -hmm. And Trump got a lot of stake in that state and the Capitol. So mm -hmm. I just I just wonder if they're trying to work some type of wiggle over there. Yeah, you never know, bro. You never know. Shit's fucking crazy, right? My yeah. thing, my whole thing was the whole the president in is set up. His job is to literally almost be a war criminal because America is run off conflict, just just the way all the business work. So like, it's really just choosing like who gonna be the, who gonna be the friendliest one for me when it when it comes to the president. I really took some time this year to educate myself on like all the props and shit because that's what's really a nigga gonna feel mm -hmm. i was happy when obama was president but he was still like bombing niggas too it was just he was black and play basketball so that was tight but like <laughs> <laughs> they they all do the same shit though for real mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes it's it's crazy because a lot of people don't realize that at the end of the day, who runs the country is the government. 
Mm-hmm. You know, that's who run the country, the government. So, um, you know, that's a whole nother thing. So let's get into I want to ask you something. So how did you start out? I, um, I started out throwing parties back in Oakland in the Bay. And I was throwing these crazy parties that kind of spiraled way bigger than we could handle as a group of homies. And we was getting all this money. I was stealing clothes, too, at the time. So I had hella Versace, hella Givenchy and shit. And, 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 and people would come up to me like, oh, y'all rappers, huh? What song y'all sing? Y'all rappers, huh? God, can we take a picture with y'all? And mind you, we was just niggas from West Oakland throwing parties. And it got to the point where I was like, well, shit, we got these big ass parties. Everybody already think we rappers. Nigga, we rappers. <laughs> and, and we started it. I, I, I remember I took a, I stole one of my dad's laptops that he was using to do, you know, miscellaneous things. I stole it and repurposed it. I put, I downloaded uh, FL back when it was just Fruity Loops. And I, start, I started teaching myself how to produce. I oh, said, so you make beats too? Uh huh. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, nigga, I just, I just stole hella ideas. Got inspired by you hella times. <laughs> <laughs> like, my path was like, I always knew who 3 Six Mafia was and y'all whole entity. Just because I, I love hip hop, um, mm-hmm. especially I always I always say it's something about the Memphis sound that's so forever. Like everybody, if you even look at niggas albums right now, everybody got some type of Memphis rip or Memphis level yeah. production. Uh, yeah. So I always took from most that. And influential. I, they, they named us most influential group of all times. I'm, I don't doubt that at all. Uh. I learned about y'all through Space Ghost Perk. That's my his nigga. production. I, I, I used to listen to his production a lot just by from being a ASAP Rocky fan, you know, and a young nigga. And I was like, man, this these beats is tight. I want to make beats like this. And uh I I just started digging on YouTube and that's how I learned about your shit. Space um, Ghost Perp, a real one. Yeah. A real one. So, so yeah. that's how I started producing, and I was rapping the whole time, just like trying to learn how to get tight. So you 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 mess with comic books? Yeah, I got a lot of them in here. I got a shit ton of comic books. What's your favorite comic book? Uh, right now I like uh, Jonathan Hickman had probably the the wildest run with Avengers that I really like. Um, it's a, it's a, what is this nigga name? He just did Silver Surfer Black and this new Thor, this God King Thor that was hella tight. I'm, I'm into, I'm just kind of all over the place with it, but I've, I'm really fucking with it. You, you know, you, you fucking old school shit like G.I. Joe, Transformers. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I used I grew up watching all that shit. I'm a super animation head, so I really watched everything. GI Joe that era, it was GI Joe Transformers, uh, He Man from that era. I fuck He Man, boy, you don't know yeah. about He Man. <laughs> I hey, I know by the power of Grayskull, nigga. Uh, <laughs> uh, what else? Look, Thundercats. You want to hear something funny? My record label is called Skeleton. We already know where they came from. Yeah, that's tight <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> that's tight as fuck. Let me show you something. Crazy on, villain, dog. This, this is in my living room right now. Hold up for a second. Look at this. Oh, that's hard. Yeah, that's Optimus, hard. Optimus Prime. The original. The original. Yeah. I got I tons of check. these. I got so many toys. I'm a toy collector. You like toys? Yeah, look. Hold on. I got a whole thing right here. This is where I keep like all the stuff that I collect from my fans and shit. I got comic books. Like Holy I got Mega Man God. Blaster. I got a Death Star. I got uh, Hello Little Avengers. 
the Marshmallow Man. I got Dragon Ball Z anime shit. I got a whole bunch of pop toys over here too. Like I just keep shit. But this my uh my other little shrine over here that I just started. Just with all. Oh the pop yeah. Toys. Oh, I got so many of those. Yeah, I love them. I fucking love them. I, I can't get enough of them. The Funko Pop. Let me let me see what pop. I got a lot of my Funko Pops in the stores. Let me see what I got. I got a. Which one did I just get? Hold up. Damn it. I just got a new, I just got a new Funko Pop. Yeah, it's in the studio. But yeah, I love Funko Pops. Look, I'm gonna show you my favorite one because my real name is Akeem. I was named after uh, Prince Akeem on Coming to America is my mama's favorite movie when she was pregnant. They're making a new one. You know the and new I one. Got one. Oh, oh. oh, that's hot. Yeah, I love that's it. Hot. I heard they was making a new one. I was mad. Ain't nobody reached out to me. I'm like, I was named after this nigga. I could act. <laughs> you know, my friend made that movie. My Ooh. friend made that movie on uh, Craig Brewer that made Hustle and Flow. Oh, that's I who. No that's, that, yeah, that's who. That's who made the new uh, coming to America. A nigga from Memphis, my boy Craig Brewer. That's tight as fuck. That's tight as fuck. You know, so you know, I'm trying that's to put, put it out to get a song up in that motherfucker, but yeah, it's hard. <laughs> like a motherfucker. <laughs> so look, man, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, uh, I ain't gonna hold you too long, man. Like. What's the what's the next shit we need to be looking out from? Yeah, I'm um I just dropped a huge merch collection. Look, I'll show you my pillow. <laughs> I heard about the merch collection. Yeah. We made crazy, hella crazy shit. I got a giant ass body pillow. Is it Chibi? Chibi, yeah. is that pronounced right? Yeah. Chibi All is right. the type of art style like that. It's like uh very cute in Japanese. Oh, that's hard. I need yeah. that. I'm gonna send you. It's one. like a body pillow. Yeah, it's a whole look. This motherfucker huge. Wow. Yeah, I'll wow. send you one. Man, please send me one. You know, <laughs> people, you know the reason why people like those body pillows? Hmm. It's when they break up with their ex and they want somebody to hold in the yeah. bed, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna sell the shit out of those. <laughs> How long they been out? Uh, it's been out for like a week now. Yeah. That's hard. What's the website? Where can we find it? Guapdad4000.com. And it's G-U-A-P. Yeah, G-U-A-P-D-A-D-4000.com. It's all on there. Oh, also, I just dropped a song called Alpha. And uh, in, in the video for Alpha, it's like hella green screen shit that we do. And I put out a challenge. I, I dropped the footage of just the green screen, no edit. If you're a video editor and you got some time on your hands, you could download the footage and then tweak it however you want to. It could be funny, it could be serious, it could be oh, whatever, but it was just something that we thought to do that would be hella fun. Yeah, yeah the, the edits people are sending already are crazy. That's hard. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> Thank that's you. a great idea. And then you might, Slick might find a new guy that'll be your new guy from moving forward exactly because this nigga was just amazing already is some tight ass niggas who i'm like damn that's kind of hard so mm -hmm. i'm taking notes i'm taking notes and it's fun and i'm giving away merch with that and cash prizes and everything all right well you know like um I read, I was reading somewhere where this year it's been more divorces and breakups than I don't know how long, probably because the quarantine, because niggas are around a motherfucker too much. Like, you know, like, I love you, but I'm kind of getting sick of seeing you every day. Yeah, I'm kind of getting sick. <laughs> so the body, pillow, the body pillow is going to be the move. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, make sure y'all go pick up that body pillow for my boy Guap, man. You and just gave me an idea for a commercial. I'm finna shoot a commercial as soon as my cameraman get back here about being lonely. 
and what the body pillow can do for you. I'm finna Bro, do that. I'm telling you, I'm being in the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. You got. I'm being you got in the commercial, but yeah, like this. That's the truth. Like that's what the body pillow is gonna do for you. People lonely yeah, out here. That's it. Niggas mm -hmm. lonely. Oh. Look, bro, man, Hell alone. love you, man, love you, man, big fan. You know, we got to kick, we got to uh, get together and do some shit, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, man, enjoy your day. God bless. And, you know, we're going to see where this country is going from uh, today from this point. And, um, you know, let's connect, bro. Yeah, let's do it. I would love to. I would love to. Absolutely. I know. I know we can make some tight shit. Yeah, I appreciate sure. you for having me on here. This has been amazing. I appreciate you being on here, man. Cool, cool kid, man. Love you, death, brother. Let's run it. Be your radio with DJ Paul.